Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. So as promised, I decided to make a second part to the first part all about an introduction to SAS macros. SAS macros can be very abstract learning it for the first time, but hopefully these videos are able to break it down in a nice understanding way. So let's look at our agenda for today. So we're gonna talk very briefly about the percent put macro, very similar to the put statement, which we're going to talk about the differences between the two. And then we're going to dive into the percent do loop macro. Now, do loops are complicated on its own, let alone it being inside of a macro. So we're definitely going to break it down. So hopefully you understand percent do loop macros a lot easier. All right, so let's dive right into the percent put macro. So the percent put macro, similar to the put statement, is going to write the value of a macro to the log is going to have that same syntax where we're gonna put the percent sign in front of it. If you see anything with a percent sign in front of it in SAS, nine times out of 10 is a macro. So the syntax is gonna be percent put and then the name of the macro. It's slightly different than the put statement, but very similar in which you're going to be able to write out items to the log. So look at this example here. So this percent put macro, I know it's a macro because it has the percent sign. I'm telling it to put the macro sys date, which is a global built-in macro, into the log. So in this case, when I view my log, it gives me out the 20th of July, 2023. Whereas the put statement down here, I'm creating a data set that I don't want to save to my work library. So anytime you see the underscore null underscore, that is a temporary data set that's not being saved. I'm assigning a value to A, a value to B, and I want to put the value of C to the log, which is just going to be these two values multiplied together. So when I view the log, I see that it puts C equals 20. So the put statement is still writing a value to the log as well as the percent put macro. Instead, the percent put macro, you're able to write values of global macros that are already built in. The put statement, you can write values from a data step or a proc step. Okay, so very, very similar. And this is um, a pretty useful function when you want to actually test out your code and just have things right to the log. Now, the percent put user is a great way for showing the values of all the macros in the program. So this is ideal because say for instance, you're working with someone else's code. Someone sends you a SAS program. They're using a lot of macros within that SAS program. So instead of you kind of like scrolling down and writing out each macro on paper, you can investigate what macros they have assigned by calling the percent put underscore you User underscore. So in this case, I have this assigned two local macros for that particular program where I did the percent let, the name of the macro is num, and I set that equal to five. Okay, so that is going to be a size, a number. Then I did another percent let, and I drew 100 samples. So now when I call percent put underscore user underscore, this is what I get out where I'm here to look at all of the global macros, but also the ones that I assign. So here you see the global macro num, I have assigned to five, and the global macro samples, I have also assigned to 100, okay? So it's sitting outside of any type of do loop, so it's considered a global macro, but it is a macro that was assigned for that particular program. So this is great, like I said, if you're reading a program for the first time, you have tons of macros inside of that program, just go ahead and type out that percent put underscore user underscore. Okay, so now let's pivot to the meat, which is the do loop macro. So you're able to use do loops inside of macro programs, and this can be very beneficial. So we're gonna see anytime you have the percent do, you're going to be followed up with a percent two, and then you're going to close it with a percent end. 
And keep in mind, based off of our first video, a macro program starts with a percent macro statement and it ends with a percent min. So you're going to be able to put this do loop in, in between those two statements. So the benefits of the do loop, and we're going to talk about three of the benefits today, and I'm also going to have a part three to talk more about macros, is say, for instance, you want to create a list of variables. And that macro, so you don't have to type out every individual variable, you can just call a macro that's storing three, four, five, ten 10 different variables within that one macro. You want to relabel or rename variables. So that's also a good use case. And you want to run the same procedure against tons of data sets. So say, for instance, you have data sets about quarter one earnings, quarter two earnings, quarter three and quarter four, and you want to get the mean and the median and the standard deviation for all four of those data sets, you could easily write out a do loop and it's going to create that for, for you. Okay. So the first situation we're going to talk about is how to create a do loop where you're creating a list of variables, right? So in this case, and I'm going backwards, <laughs> in this case, we are going to see that you may need a list of variables that you want to analyze. So a do loop can store this list of variables for you so that you don't have to keep typing every single variable out for every procedure. So variable one, then variable two, all the way to variable 50. So it's ideal for very wide data sets, so data sets with tons of columns, where variables share the same prefix or suffix, like Q1, Q2, Q3, Q4, and so forth. So in this example, I have created pretty much a demonstrative data set. You can type in the same code and get the same output. I'm going to link the code in the description. In this case, I'm creating a data set called test. And I have three demographic variables. I have demog1, demog2, demog3. Remember that a dollar sign that comes after the variable is considered a character variable. And I also have information about purchase amount in the purchase category. And I just created some data lines so that we can see this in action. I then created a macro here where I call the macro var list. So keep in mind, I'm going to put my do loop in between the macro statement and the min statement, just like we learned in part one. So in this case, this is my do loop. I'm going to set i equal to one, since that is the first number of the first variable, all the way to three, which that is my last demographic variable. And I'm going to call demog ampersand i. So this lets me say demog and one, demog two, demog three. And then that is going to store all of my demographic variables. I then am able to do a prop print, and I'm able to call that macro with that percent sign. And then I get out just my demographic variables. Say, for instance, I wanted to do something special with my demographic variables. I can also do another procedure and just write out my percent var list. And it's going to always do that across three of these variables. OK, so let's actually see this in action. I'm going to go inside SAS Studio. I have that same code that I just walked through above. And I'm going to link that code in the description below. And in this case, let's go ahead and write our macro. So we know a macro starts with percent macro. I'm going to call the macro var list. And we know that it's going to end with percent min. Okay. And I'm going to percent min the var list as well. So now I can put my do loop here. We know that do loops are percent do. Then it's going to have a percent two. And then it's also going to have a percent end. So this is me kind of mapping out what I know my do loop to be. So what do I actually want to do? I want to set a macro called i equal to 1. This is going to be my counting macro. And I want to do that all the way up to 3 because I know that I have three variables. So if I have 14 demographic features, I can put it all the way up to 14. I then am going to call the first prefix, all of my variables say, share the same prefix, which is demog. And then I'm gonna do the and i, so that way that it can go and take the value of i. And since it's a do loop, it's going to have i equal to one, then it's gonna loop, have i equal to two, then it's going to loop again and have i equal to three, okay? 
And so that is the macro that I want, right? So this is my macro. Now I could do my proc print, for instance, or my proc SG plot, or my proc core, whatever I'm trying to do. And I'm going to do the data, and I'm going to set it equal to test, because that's what I call the data above when I created it. And I'm going to call var with the percent sign var list, because that is the name of that macro program that I just created. And I'm just going to go ahead and run it. So the first thing is I'm going to go ahead and run the data set that I created so we can look at it. So this is the data set that we created. We see our demographic variables here. And then I'm going to go ahead and run my actual macro. And you see that it was able to print out all of my demographic variables without me having to type it in this long list. Because if I had 15, I would have to be like the mog one, the mog two, the mog three, the mog four, the mog five, et cetera. And you see how that can take a lot of time, right? So this is a good way to just store a list of variables that I'm going to have to do a, the same analysis on into a macro program itself. And then I'm able to just call that macro in any procedure that I need. Okay. So let's go back to the presentation. So that is how we utilize that percent do loop macro to store a list of variables. Okay. So now let's look at this macro in order to label or rename a list of variables. So say for instance, I need to actually assign labels to my variables to give people context. So this is good um, data integrity. This is good data quality assurance that for variables that need labels, you are supposed to add labels. It makes databases a whole lot easier to understand. It helps people understand the data tons better. So in this case, say for instance, I have financial data for customer payments and it shows up as receipt one, receipt two, receipt three in my data set. So I would want to relabel the data as first receipt of payment in 2023, second receipt of payment in 2023, third receipt of payment in 2023. Because say, for instance, 2024 comes up and I don't know when someone actually made a purchase. I'm going to continue to work with the same demographic data. And so here I was able to create labels. So I created a new macro called add labels. Of course, we did our three parts, percent do, percent to, percent ends. And here I want to iterate through each variable and I want to assign the label so people know that this is the demographic information as of the 2023 November survey. Okay. As always, I'm going to end with a mend. And then here when I do a proc print, and I add label to that first statement, I'm able to see the labels print out in my data set. So let's actually look at this inside SAS. All right, so let's go ahead and see that macro. So in this case, I have the same test data set that we did for the previous example. I'm gonna go ahead and call this add labels. I'm gonna end it with a mint and call add labels. And then I'm going to go ahead and type in my pieces, right? So I know I need a percent do. I know I need a percent to. And then I know I need a percent end for my loop. Okay. So just like the previous example, I'm going to set a macro variable called I equal to one. And I'm going to take it all the way to three because I know I have three variables that have the same prefix. If I don't know how many variables I have that has the same prefix, I could put a count parentheses in this macro, but we'll talk about that in a future tutorial. So now I'm going to have the mog and I'm going to call on that I macro and I, and I'm going to set that equal to demographic data of 2023. Okay. And so that is what I want it to be. So that is our macro. And so now in a proc print, I can say data equals to that test set. I can call label. And then I'm going to call labels and call that percent macro, which is add underscore labels here. So it knows to print out based off of the labels. And then when I run this, my results is coming out with the actual labels. 
Okay. So that is another use of our do loop macro that is going to be inside of our macro program that we can call on in future procedures and or data steps. Okay. All right, let's keep going. All right, so the third and final thing that I'm going to demonstrate is how to run the same procedure against multiple data sets, right? So sometimes you want to, you have multiple data sets. In this use case, I say that you have 12 data sets with product purchase information for each month. And you want to calculate the mean, median, standard deviation for every month, right? So the data sets are called purchases one, purchase two, purchase three, all the way up to purchase 12. So for demonstrative purposes, I created the first three months here with data lines. And then I created my macro program. So once again, I have my macro statement, my program called mean amount, and I end it with my min statement. And inside, I have my do loop. And I want to do from I equals one to three, since I have three data sets, and I want to run a proc means on every data set. So I'm going to have the data equal to purchase with the ampersand I, and then I want to get the variable amount to get the summary statistics. And then I'm just going to call that macro to get out all of the summary statistics across all of my data set. So instead of doing 12 proc means, I can now just create a macro and it will do it for me. So let's see how this actually looks in SAS Studio. So I have the example here with the data line. So I have created purchase one, purchase two, and purchase three. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And now we're going to get into the macro. So I'm just going to delete this and so we can type it together. So in this case, as always, we do our percent macro and I'm gonna call this mean purchase. And then any program ends with a percent mint and then we have mean purchase. And now we're gonna put the pieces of our do loop. So we're gonna do percent do and then we're going to do percent two and then we're going to do percent ends right so just like anything else i want to create another macro called i and i'm going to set i equal to one and then two three so if i had 12 months of data this would be 212 and then i want to do a proc means on every one and i want to say for every data set so data equals to purchase and percent i and then I want to do the variable amount in this case. So I'm just going to call amount here, and then I'm going to run it, okay? And if I wanted to, I can also add a title, all of that good stuff. But I'm going to keep it pretty simple for right now, get rid of those spaces. And this is my macro program. Let me put a semicolon after the end. Awesome. So now if I call percent mean, underscore purchase, it should give me out three summary statistics. So let's see. And it does. So it looks like the mean purchase for my first month was $52.95. For my second, $67.34. And for my third, $58.73. Awesome, awesome. So let's go ahead and continue and do a quick summary before we wrap up today. As always, the percent puts macro is awesome for writing macros to your log so that you can see the expected outputs of some of the global macros. It's also beneficial for you to create a list of global macros in a program and write that to your log. The percent do loop macro can be used within a macro program to label the same variables with um, label different variables that have the same prefix. It also can store a list of um, variables so you don't have to keep typing out every individual variable. And it also can run procedures against multiple data sets. So thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.